hello friends uh, welcome to my channel so today i'm going to discuss a very new concept and uh, it is i will use this concept for solving the two numericals uh, these two numericals are from pathfinder you can see the two chapter marks and the question marks all of them are given here so one question is from check your understanding 2 and build your understanding 13 both are of uh, similar kind of problems but hair spring is not given and hair spring is given so how we will solve this i will discuss a very very new method and that is called interconversion of system methods okay i have given it a, a very fancy name interconversion of system methods but actually it's a very basic method and uh, we will be solving it using the rot rail system that we study in our regular j syllabus okay so here uh, first credits to Baba physics for this screenshot because uh, I just took the screenshot from there because I was too lazy to just attach a question <coughs> okay okay please see the second part okay second part I think there is some problem in the question so let us see what uh, is the problem in the question so uh, at actually the problem statement would change slightly okay here uh, <coughs> instead of giving this that the disk is uh, okay displaced a little bit where uh, that is given okay displaced down slightly and release this statement i think is probably wrong i think in the question it's my opinion because if would uh, if we would <coughs> displace it slightly it would have an initial velocity which would be directed upwards okay so i think uh, this statement should change to natural length okay the spring is natural length initially spring is natural length initially only then the answer will match okay so i will tell you that how i have come to this conclusion uh, in the upcoming part okay so here if we see this system there is a system in which spring is at natural length there is a disc okay a thick disc Okay, uh, some coin you can just consider it of thickness t naught which is very very less than the radius of the disk it is already given uh, in the question it is given d i have just taken it to be t naught okay now t naught is the thickness and it is very very less than r and there is a field which is directed along the thickness okay if this is uh, okay so if this is the curved surface of this disk and here is the da vector the field would be somewhat like this b vector would be like this and this is da vector so this is theta so field is directed at some angle okay so b dot da would give us the value of the flux that is total flux passing through the surface so never mind we have not been asked it yet so here i am going to show you that how we can just convert this system how i can just convert this system into a rod rail system okay how i will just see okay these are two different problems and i will show you the connection between the two problems what is the connection between the two problems okay this problem is also solved under j regular j syllabus and this problem is also solved under regular j syllabus so here for both the problems we have to find this okay so in the question they have asked only time period but i have added additional seven parts to the problem that is you have to find the equilibrium position you have to find the amplitude maximum elongation maximum speed y as a function of time or x whatever you take it to be along whatever axis you take either you take x or either you take y on the downward side i don't know whatever you want to take you can just take and here maximum charge and maximum current so i just uh, wanted to add something new to the question so just added seven parts and this has been suggested by my teacher okay to add the seven parts so credits to him too okay so now this question became uh, now from this question you can just divide the whole of your shm and your basic electromagnetic induction so let us see what is the connection between the two systems let us see so here the first question arises that how s1 and s2 are same okay this is the first question that uh, we are going to answer that how s1 and s2 are same see if i just see the system from the front side what would i see is uh, there is a capacitor actually because there of there will be a charge separation okay it is a capacitor that is moving upwards and downwards upwards and downwards so if i write the capacitance of the system c and just observe it okay so capacitance is epsilon naught pi r square by t naught it is neither depending on the charge nor the velocity anything it is just depending upon the physical situation of the system physical situation of the system so we can take it as a static one okay so we just make the capacitance a static one okay it is not moving i have uh, taken it to be in rest okay now the second idea that motivated me to do this is uh, basically the magnetic field is always perpendicular it is always same magnetic field is always same but the system since it is moving it would be equivalent it would be equivalent 
to go rod moving in such a situation okay i have just made an equivalent situation here uh, but uh, here the situation you will not understand it that clearly so i have just turned it you have to turn this diagram and see this one okay so what would happen i am just seeing a capacitor that is fixed the value of capacitance is epsilon not pi r square by t not the thickness of the rod uh, sorry uh, the length of the rod is taken to be t not or the distance between the two rails is taken to be t not and the spring is kx okay so i have just drawn the situation into an another scenario okay we have just uh, discussed that the system will be equivalent to the system okay so why this happened because you can say that the radius since the radius was very very greater than t not and here the length of the uh, rails are very very greater than the length of the uh, rod okay so here we can just apply it okay <coughs> we can just inter convert easily so this is an original idea by the way i don't know whether anyone else knows or not but uh, this idea came into my mind so i just wanted to share it. okay so for equilibrium position if i write the equilibrium position here you can say that mg is acting downward initially there would be no velocity initially only mg would be there that would try to make a velocity in the downward direction or an acceleration in the downward direction since there would be velocity in the downward direction and there is a field which is uh, outside the plane when you find v cross b okay when you find v cross b it would come in this direction that means the positive terminal of the cell would be in this direction okay so accordingly i have written the current that would flow like this okay current would be flowing like this now once i find i cross b i is like this and b is like this i will get force upward and we can also say intuitively that it would the force that is induced will oppose the motion so it will always be opposite to mg so here if i write the equilibrium equilibrium relation okay here what is x x is just any displacement okay any kind of displacement not equilibrium not maximum okay it is just any kind of displacement from the uh equilibrium uh, that uh, initial position okay not equilibrium but i have to say initial position okay now here the purpose is how to find i using this circuit using this circuit i can write i using kirchhoff's law kirchhoff's law that is uh, dq by dt now q can be written as cv q can be written as cv now dv by dt now what uh, you can use kirchhoff's law or you can use this uh, to write charge as a function of acceleration you can just find that charge will become as a function of velocity and then current will come as a function of acceleration using kirchhoff's law you can write or otherwise you can use this simple differentiation to get current as a function of acceleration that is cbt not a now once you put the value of cbt not a here okay you will get the value accordingly cbt not a and here you get the value of acceleration you take m common and then you will get this situation so here in the equilibrium position we will say that a would be zero that acceleration would be zero so this whole term would be zero and at that time x not the value of x would be x not so here from here we get x not is equal to mg by k so here we already solved the first part now let's come to the second part the second part of the question asked about the time period now for time period i know that it was initially here then it come to the equilibrium position then it uh, then further it uh, goes by x dash so the total x distance that is travel is x not plus x dash so here we write mg minus kx as mg minus kx not minus kx dash and here regular acceleration equation now from the equilibrium equation here these two terms get zero and minus kx dash is equal to uh, this term and here this is 1 by omega square from that we find the expression of the time period so what is the general formula see if it is a cylindrical okay it is a cylindrical type of a coin type of thing and here if i got any other type of suppose i got a triangular prism okay or i got a square cuboid anything any other shape it would be just the capacitance of that shape shape the width of that shape into the field squared okay so this is the general formula for any situation so this would be c b square l square by k this is the general formula you can apply it for any shape you just need to find the capacitance times the field square times the thickness of the uh, your uh, thickness of the shape okay so here uh, amplitude would be equal to x not uh, which is mg by k now what is the maximum elongation maximum elongation can be written as uh, here first it goes x not where u is equal to 0 initial velocity is 0 then it comes to equilibrium position where acceleration is zero and then it comes to the final position where velocity is zero so the amplitude was x not so x not from here to here and x not from here to here total maximum elongation that would be 2x not which is 2mg by k this is the value of x max okay 
so you can see that uh, we are revising shm2 for finding the maximum amount of velocity we can just multiply uh, a omega mg by k into the value of omega and then we get the value of maximum velocity now the third parts come that uh, we have to find the uh, distance as a function of time okay distance as a function of time. this is a very very uh, crucial part or you can say that shm uh, you will get you will get to revise shm okay so here first it was here okay and when uh, uh, here it is the equilibrium position so if i write the phase constant according to this position it would come 3 pi by 2 okay you must have studied that we'll go from here to here then come here then go here then go come here okay we write phase constant like that okay so for this situation the phase constant would be here it is 0 pi by 2 pi 3 pi by 2 so phase constant is 3 pi by 2 okay so x dash is minus mg by k cos omega t now x dash could be written as x minus uh, x naught so x would be equal to x naught minus mg by k now mg minus k cos omega t you put the value of phi naught equal to 3 by 3 pi by 2 in the equation x naught is equal to uh, x naught is equal to uh, mg by k sin omega t plus phi naught and you put the value of that here is the equation x dash is equal to x naught dash into sin omega t plus phi naught see okay so second method i will be discussing here first method you understand that x is equal to mg by k 1 minus cos omega t this is the equation of the motion this is the method one or the easier method now we come to the second method we write the acceleration as this x dash in the terms of x dash we get a equation of simple harmonic oscillator so here we get the equation of simple harmonic oscillator we put it x dash is equal to x naught dash into sin omega t some maximum value x naught dash so i don't know whatever it be we'll just find it okay x naught dash is unknown and phi naught is also unknown we got two unknowns okay now x can be done as x dash can be done as x minus mg by k so x x is equal to mg by k plus x naught dash sin omega t plus phi naught so we get x naught dash and phi naught as two unknowns so we need two equations so here we'll use the initial conditions that is t is equal to zero x is equal to zero and v is equal to zero using that two equations when we put the value of dx by dt that is v is equal to zero we get phi naught is equal to pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 whether or whatever you put uh, in the given equation in this equation you put phi naught is equal to pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 and in this equation you put phi naught is equal to pi or 3 pi by 2 you will get the same equation here okay you just try that so method one is using general analysis simple analysis and the third situation is using general SHM equation okay now here v max we already found out q max would be equal to epsilon naught r b uh, v max so here we put the value of that we get uh, the answer now a max first you write the acceleration as a function of time then maximize this function you get this and when you write the uh, current maximum it would be same as this okay i will like the solution and this is a very new method okay thanks